Okay, so I have the surround back right amplifier mounted back to the heatsink. I did add the interface board that connects all the inputs and the temperature sensors and whatnot together, but I have not connected the main power supply board yet. But I'm thinking I might want to go ahead and pull this thing off and just spray a little deoxid in the female portion of the connectors just to prevent any oxidation in the future. I'm thinking that's what the problem was. But I'm going to go ahead and resolder all the ground pins on this connector because as you saw when I did not connect the ground, I had a 60 volt DC offset. So I'm thinking that might be the problem. But like I said, I'll solder all the ground pins and I'm going to solder all the power supply pins that go on these big blue connectors right here just to make sure that I'm not missing a B plus or a B minus rail or the common ground that it needs to operate correctly. So hopefully this will work. I'm just going to try to very, very gingerly drip some deoxid in here. I'm not sure if I can meter it well enough. All right, very good. Then I'll go ahead and attach the circuit board back to it. All right, there it is, reattached. Now I'm gonna go ahead and resolder the ground pin on every one of these plugs because I think that's the one that matters the most because if that differential amplifier does not have ground, it's gonna be trouble. Okay, and I resoldered all the ground pins that go from the digital board to the amplifier, even though they share one continuous trace right here. This is all connected together right there. But hopefully this is going to take care of the problem. Once again, I'm going to go ahead and resolder the B+, plus, the B-, minus, and the ground pins from the power supply as well. And I'm going to go ahead and add some deoxid to those just in case there's a pin fitment issue. A little bit of corrosion, that should take care of it. All right, there we go. The bigger the glob, the better the job. And we'll do the same thing to these connectors, try to dribble some deoxid in here. Okay, I think that's good. Let's plug everything back together. And then we'll hook up the power supply that I made and try to fire it off on the bench. And we can check the DC offset on every channel that way. Okay, so here is the power supply that I built to power that one amplifier board. I have it connected to the main filter caps, the negative, the common, and the positive right here. And I have my test probe on the common lead right here, which is the center tamp of the transformer or effectively ground. I did check that the audio input is grounded at this point, and it is 0.3 ohms to ground, so we should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and power this thing up very slowly while watching the positive and negative voltages just to make sure I'm not going into an overload condition and I'll watch the current as it comes up as well. So we're at about plus and minus 37 volts. We'll take it up to about 40. There we go. 40 volts there and 40 volts there. And then we'll just go ahead and take a look at the speaker outputs and see what voltage they're sitting at right now. So that's the one that we were having problems with. That's the surround back right, 0.003 volts, perfectly fine. We can actually measure them over here on the coils, 0 0.004, 0 0.016, 0 0.025, 0 0.005, absolute zero, 0 0.017, and 0 0.007. So those should correspond exactly to the speaker output leads, which are these terminals right here. 17, 5, 0, 0, 6, 0, 0, 1, 7, 0, 2, 5, and 0, 0, 5. So that matches up perfectly. Let's go to millivolts, and I'm going to crank this thing up. Let's go ahead and crank this thing up to a full plus and minus 60 volts on the rails at this point. 
still watching the current we're at about 60 watts right now I'm at 50 volts and there we are at 60 volts and minus 60 volts let's go ahead and check all the offsets again we'll go in the millivolt range this time 7 millivolts 29 millivolts negative 16 millivolts 1 millivolt negative 4.3 millivolts 8 millivolts and 20 millivolts perfectly fine no load connected at this point these things are running completely unloaded at this point so i'm perfectly happy with this i'm going to go ahead and reassemble this jigsaw puzzle and we'll give it a test once again and hopefully everything's good at this point all right here we go i'm going to put my probe on the surround back right test probe right here this is the bias adjustment test probe normally you use two of them but it is helpful to check dc offset on one channel Power the unit on at full voltage. And as you can see, I've got 10 millivolts DC offset right now. Speaker relay did engage, that's perfectly fine. I still have no speakers connected. I'm just gonna go down the line and test every channel and see what kind of DC offset we have. So I've got 12 and four and a half on one channel, 34 and 27 on the next, minus 11, minus 18 on the next one, seven and zero on the next one. Now if I can just squeeze in here, 1.9 and minus six, 14.8, and seven, then the last channel is 27.9 and 20.0. So that would be a 7.9 millivolt DC bias. Everything is working perfectly. The unit powered up. It's not gone into protection. Everything's great. I'm going to let it sit here and cook. Okay, so here are the bias levels. 8.6, 8.4, 8.5, 8.7, 8.8, 8.9, 8.10, 8.7 and 8.6. I'm perfectly happy with every channel in this unit. So just to see if there's any bad connections in this unit right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick it up. I'm gonna leave the back two feet on the bench. I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna kinda torque the chassis or torsion the chassis back and forth. And this is gonna help exercise all the connections and we'll see if it shuts down, which it has not done yet. So I'll power it down. There's off, power it back on, and while it's coming on, I'll go ahead and just keep torquing this thing back and forth. Wait for the speaker relay, there it is. Everything is perfectly fine. Okay, let's connect speakers and see if it makes sounds now. Okay, well I have it tuned to an FM station. I only have five speakers connected, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can put this thing into the test mode where it drives each speaker individually and then we can actually test all seven channels okay so let's go ahead and go into the speaker setup channel level and that's where the test tone is so there is the front left center channel front right I do not have a surround right connected at this point, but I do have a surround back right. And that's the amp that we're having problems with. And I have a surround back left connected. And I do not have a surround left or a subwoofer connected. So let me go ahead and just get the surround right and left connected. And we'll do a 100% final test of every amplifier in this unit. So there is the front left. Center, front right, surround right. Now I do not have surround back right or surround back left connected at this point, and surround left. Every channel's working perfect. Let's just go ahead and feed some audio into this thing, make sure it plays sound and it sounds okay. Okay, I have my MP3 player connected. Let's go ahead and hit the play button on it now.
And it's working perfect. There it is, the Denon Network AVR4310CI. It's repaired once again. What a powerhouse this thing is. Look at the size of that power transformer in this thing. Oh my goodness. Anyhow, just take a look at how well this thing is built. It is built really well. I cannot believe how good this thing is. This is going to be upside down, but look at all the connections on the back of this thing. It's absolutely unbelievable. And of course, there's my paper clip for my FM antenna. But just look at this thing. Anyhow, that is it. It's up and running, gonna send it back to my customer. I think he's gonna be very, very happy. I've got about four hours of labor into this thing just to tear it apart and deoxit those connectors and resolder the uh, pins. I think it's gonna be just fine. Anyhow, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the repair on the Denon AVR4310CI. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're done there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. If you do try to send me a message on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, it might be weeks or even months before I answer it. I rarely check those messages. So please, if you want to get a hold of me, use the Gmail. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.